So moving on to look at the, the buckling resistance. So for the buckling resistance of a compression member, Eurocode 313 um, refers us to the method laid out in Eurocode 311. And so that's the main part of the steel design code. Um, but the buckling curve that we need to use is provided in um, table 6.3 from Eurocode 1.3, but everything else of the method is from um, part 1.1 of the Eurocode. And there's three different types of buckling that um, we need to consider for light gauge members. So that's flexural buckling, and that would be in both major and minor axis, and then torsional buckling and torsional flexural buckling, which are, um, occur as an overall member in both directions. And so we need to consider all of those um, modes of buckling. The hot roll I sections or H sections, it may be that generally that only flexural buckling was ever needed to be considered, uh, but that's not the case for light gauge members. So flexural buckling is the sort of standard sort of buckling that most people will be familiar with. Um, you apply an axial load and it buckles sideways, generally in the minor axis, because that's the axis with the least resistance, buckling resistance. But you may have some additional restraints in particular axes, and so it's not necessarily always the minor axis that that's um, a critical case. It will depend on its uh, buckling length within that direction. Torsional buckling <clears throat> is easier to think about um, when we've got a um, cross section that is, is much more um, in, a, in a cross type shape. Um, so, but it's not always just for these types of members. These are just shown um, for ease of explanation, I suppose. So if we just look at the the actual cross cross um, cross section, so the one highlighted in the in the box there, if we apply a ax an axial load to that member, um, the whole cross section will be subject to um, compression stresses. Um, in the middle here, where all the members or all the elements of that cross section meet. There's quite a lot of restraint, and so <clears throat> it's unlikely that we're going to get buckling at those points. But what we've actually got is at the tips of these um, elements around the cross section, we've still got the compression force, the compression stresses, <clears throat> but they're not very well restrained. So those tips are going to want to buckle because they're subject to a compression stress. They're going to want to buckle sideways. And they can all buckle in the same direction, which would actually cause a rotation at mid height, as shown there. So you can imagine that when that overall section is subject to compression, the tips buckle and you get this rotation. And that can also be applied to other cross sections. The tips with less restraint want to buckle and you get the rotation, as shown with this other type of uh, cross section. Now, these aren't the typical light gauge members um, but you can imagine with a lipped C it's not a million miles away from this and you can get some torsional buckling occurring maybe not pure torsional buckling maybe it's combined with a little bit of flexural buckling and so we need to check that sort of condition as well so conveniently termed torsional flexural buckling so where you've got an asymmetric section um, you've got one flange that is more liable to buckle than the other, so a shorter flange is going to buckle before a wider flange. Um, so that shorter flange buckles laterally with what is sort of pure torsion, uh, flexural buckling, but because it's attached to something that's stiffer, there's also a rotation aspect associated with the overall buckling. <clears throat> so we get a combination of torsional and flexural buckling. <clears throat> 
So in terms of the buckling resistance, the overall equation that we need to use to calculate our buckling resistance is fairly standard. And what we've actually got is this uh, chi value. Um, and that will be calculated and specific for each different type of buckling. So we'll have effectively four different values of chi. Uh, one for um, flexural buckling in the major axis, one for flexural buckling in the minor axis, uh, one for torsional buckling and one for torsional flexural buckling. And then that's multiplied by the effective area and the uh, basic yield strength divided by gamma m1 again. Well, at gamma m1, which is still one. So that's the same sort of expression that you'd use for hot rolled sections, except, of course, we're using the effective area.